We always like to warn you when we are diving into a PG, PG-13 conversation, so you have the chance to push pause, mute, send little ears out of the room. So now is your opportunity to do that. My next guest says there's a shift happening in the way that parents talk about the birds and the bees. Instead of treating it like a taboo topic, she says parents are looking for opportunities to get the conversation started and keep it going. So that motivated her to put together a list of the best books to teach kids about sex. Kristen Hodson is a licensed clinical social worker and therapist. It's great to have you. Thank you. I am appreciative of your observation of this shift, of, of the, the change you're seeing happening on the parent front. Why? Why do you think there has been a shift away from the awkward talk oh, to a I more love it so open much. dialogue? Because for so many people, there would be this idea that when, when a child's 8 or 12, we're going to sit them down and we're going to have the talk. Uh -huh. And we're going to download all this information and then that's it, like I did my job. And what parents are seeing is they're missing out on the opportunity to really increase the relationship and be the go-to trusted resource for their kids. And they're wanting that. There's an opportunity for bonding and relationship building instead of just the dun dun dun. Right, so you say it shouldn't be a one and done conversation. Mm -hmm. What's the key to keeping that dialogue open and ongoing? I call it, it's a thousand one minute conversations. It's seeing, it's, it's having proactive conversations about, hey, we should talk about this and this, and it's seeing the opportunities and taking advantage of those. As I forecast this from a parenting perspective, I'm a few years away still, I know, thankfully, but I get a little concerned, Kristen, about the balance of being open mm -hmm. and being candid, as we know we should, yep. but also reserving this topic for one of respect and reverence and even sacredness. How do you walk that line? That's a great question because a lot of parents are wondering the exact same thing. And when we're teaching our kids and we're having more than the one time conversation, we're teaching them all along the way, like anything else we're teaching them in their lives. We're, we're giving them opportunities to learn the nuances, to have the questions, to learn the boundaries, to learn the values and the sacredness when we do it over a period of time. So talking about it often doesn't take away from the respect or Not at all. of sex. In fact, it can almost system. preserve it more because it takes off shock. It takes out the shock factor. Okay. It also takes away the taboo or the like. Curious. It can make it a really healthy. Um, like my kids all the time. I'm like, we're talking about this, and your friends get to talk about this with their parents. You set those boundaries. Yes. These books come into play as part of that goal to have an ongoing mm -hmm. dialogue. Would you say these books are good recommendations for every family library? I would say so. I often tell parents, I'm like, how many cookbooks do you have? And they'll have 10, 20, 30. How many books do you have on sexual health? And some will not have any. And you're not gonna find, I don't find books have all the information. You need a variety of books to teach the variety of lessons that are gonna come up. Let's jump in. Your first book is called Who Has What? You say it's a book that teaches kids the correct name for body parts. And that can start early, teeny tiny. And How teeny tiny, Kristen? Like right now, bro. Ah, okay. Like right now. I was afraid you might say that. Yes, <laughs> like right now. And the, the awkwardness often comes from the parents of, sure. I didn't learn this, and what if they learn the correct terminology and they're saying it out on the playground? Right. That's for us to grapple with. Because for the kids, they don't know it's any different than head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Mm -hmm. So learning the correct body parts actually also supports in preventing abuse. And if there's something wrong with their body parts, to be able to talk about it accurately. So I'm looking at the inside pictures of this book. Does my two-year-old really need to know an ovary or a uterus? It can. Yeah. I mean, my, my three-year-old could name all of her reproductive anatomy, but it really wasn't different than her knowing... Um, it's like her eyes and her nose and her lips and it's okay. just the body parts. Okay, all right. The next book on your list, it's not the stork. I love that the age recommendation here is zero to 99. <laughs> yes, because this is where the parents get to determine because I know within our family, each child at a different age has been ready for that conversation. Based on their maturity. Yes, sure. and sometimes the conversation is five minutes. Kids will get saturated and they're like, I'm good, that's all I needed to know. Um, and this book helps because parents that are nervous about freestyling this conversation about the birds and the bees, they can use the book to help guide them. Okay, so why do you like the book particularly? It's not about the stork, or not the stork. Because it, being able to talk to your kids about how babies are made guides them through and gives kids, I love the illustrations in it. Uh -huh. The illustrations are super simple. The kids love to look at those pictures and then it gives parents the words and the language. Uh -huh. So it's a best of both worlds. And a baby, a topic, maybe a gateway topic in that Absolutely. most kids can, can relate to. American Girl fans will love your next oh, recommendation, yes. Care and Keeping of You. You recommend this for preteens? I love this one. Kind of the tweens where girls are starting to develop and they're noticing their friends are developing and it talks about sexual health differently because we're talking about health, hygiene, healthy relationships, puberty, zits, maturation, but again, super approachable. The, the pictures are wonderful and this is a book I'm comfortable handing over.
And letting them read. Letting them read. You can read it together. That can be a part of the bonding. But this is one where I'm like, there's nothing that I've seen that I would be uncomfortable or feel like I had to discuss more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's pretty self-explanatory. I remember when it was released, it's fairly new, right? In the last Ish, four or yeah. five years. Mm -hmm. And I remember parents and therapists and experts alike were just praising it mm -hmm. for its openness and its its um, modern, fresh feel that That's girls right. could relate to and attach to. Next, a book with the boys in mind, Guy Stuff, The Body Book for Boys. And this one is brand new. Okay. And once it finally came out, I was like, huh. Ah because it's been so hard to find one for boys. And my son really wanted to know, he's so curious, he's nine, and he wanted to know what's coming down the pipeline. And he's curious about body odor, similar as the American Girls. It's uh -huh. done by them, but for boys. Okay. And so another one they can devour on their own. Just hand it over and let them read. So we're or talking, you can read together. We're talking hygiene, we're talking those basics. Yep. Okay, all right, finally you say this last book every parent needs to read, it's called For Goodness, Sex. I love this one because it's difficult once you get into the teenage years to find a book that I can wholeheartedly recommend. This one helps parents start and getting clarity around their values and how they want to approach sexuality with their mm -hmm. developing teenagers mm -hmm. and starting with critical components beyond just sexual behavior. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is a really good outline for that. You have one more suggestion I want to add that's not a book, but an article you say empowers kids and parents to talk about the dangers of pornography, the naked people in your iPod. Yes, and what I love about this, this is Paul Malin, and he's talked about pornography in a non-scary, really empowering, how do we deconstruct this so your kids can think through pornography okay. instead of feeling like it's just scary addictive the end so that's a big topic but that it breaks Sick. it down in an appropriate mm. way yes he's done a fantastic job all right Kristen really helpful really thank helpful you. thank you so much we'll post a link to Kristen's blog on our website where you'll find the complete list of titles and authors kristenbhodson.com slash blog look for that link at the studio 5 website thanks again thank you